Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. He's worthy. Amen. Good morning. Aren't you glad that the battle doesn't belong to you? I'm so thankful today of that reminder that every battle I face, every battle I may find myself in, that it's not my fight, that I'm fighting against the Lord who does the fighting on my behalf. All I have to do is tap into him. Amen. All I do is, all I have to do is get behind dad. Come on, somebody. I just got to get behind dad and let dad do his work. But we're excited. It goes without saying that you're here with us today. I want you to turn to your neighbor. I want you to tell him something very important. I want you to tell him you look about as good as you can today. You look about as good as you can. Hallelujah. I'm going to step down. You definitely look about as good as you can. Amen. Pastor Tammy had mentioned about connections um, at the end of service. We're not doing that today. Um, um, so I'm going to take a moment here before we jump into the word for a few minutes just to connect with connect with you and also connect you with some of the uh, things that are taking place. The connection card she mentioned, if you are new and you didn't have an opportunity to fill out a connection card uh, in person, you can fill it out electronically right on our website or right on our app. You can just scan that code. We would love to connect with you. We have a free gift for all of you that are new today. Um, when you head out um, we're in our Fall Fest area, you'll see a connections tent. There's going to be a free gift for you there. But not only that, everyone that fills out a card legibly, Hello, somebody. I'm going to send you a personal card for me, and then it's also going to have a gift card in there for you. We just want to say thanks for being here with us today. I know it took a whole lot for some to come, especially I saw all the little kids coming in, and it's it's a lot of work. All, all of my four babies were babies at one time. They're all big babies now, but they were little. So I know, I know the fight, okay, on a Sunday morning, and so my heart goes, goes out to you, but we're thankful you're here. So fill out that connection card. Let us connect with you. We're excited about what God's doing here at Kingdom Life. Um, it's amazing to see the, the, the hand of God on the ministry and the atmosphere of the worship, as Pastor Tammy mentioned. Also thankful for our Israel missions and Pastor Tammy and the team. I want all of you to stand. If you want that ministry trip, that missions trip really quick, just stand where you are. Can we give them a hand for, for sacrificing and, and going? We believe in praying for, we believe in sowing into, we believe that Israel is important, uh, of the utmost importance. And so if you're new, we, we send uh, missions teams and, 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 uh, and tour teams there on the regular. So there'll be a team leaving in March and then another in the fall. And so if you have any, if you want any information about a trip to Israel, see Pastor Tammy, find her sometime after service today and she'll share that with you. But thank you for sowing into, uh, sowing into Israel and the Jewish people. Uh, also, next weekend, I did want to tell you, uh, it is our Man Up Men's Conference, and we are so pumped about this conference. We have Nikita Koloff coming in. If you're just finding out, he is a, a former professional wrestler. I grew up watching Nikita, the Russian nightmare. Come on. He's going to be back with us for the second time. He'll be with us on Friday night. Now, he will not be speaking on Friday. He will be here Friday. He'll speak just a few moments, but Friday night is what we're calling the Royal Rumble. Now, everybody that knows the Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, you know it's going to be something exciting. Now, the guys are not going to be wrestling, but they're going to be tag team preaching. And I've got three very dear friends of mine that are evangelists, pastors, men of God. They're, they're college athletes. These guys are men's men. They're going to come in and they're going to lay it down on Friday night. We have a full worship service. Um, and then on Saturday morning, our opening service, we have breakfast and our opening service, uh, a worship at nine o'clock. And Nikita will be speaking then. Nikita will be in and out throughout the whole day. We'll have a barbecue lunch. Everybody likes a free free lunch, right? Barbecue, and then the afternoon we're having Nikita back. But we have breakout sessions. So I have nine of my friends that are going to be doing breakout sessions all over the building um, throughout the day. So I just want to encourage you, men, get signed up. Sign up today if at all possible, because we're doing a lot of planning and preparation for next weekend. All you got to do is scan the code. It's also in your program. But sign up today, men. Don't wait to the last minute because you might not get a barbecue sandwich. Come on now. And I'm kidding, of course. We'll, we'll go. I'll go out and buy you some barbecue if I have to. But but sign up early, ladies. Get those men in your life signed up. Get those sons signed up. It's going to be a powerful weekend of ministry for our men. I believe that God is calling our men to step up. And I believe the ladies have already stepped up, man. We're, we're way behind. Come on, we're way behind. We got to we got to bring it up some. And so I, I I believe that God is charging our men and calling our men and and drawing our men to come up, come up in worship, come up in word, come up in leading. Come on, come up as a 
a disciple, he's calling us up, man. Look at a man and tell him, he's calling you up. He's calling you up. And so I'm excited about that. So many other wonderful things um, that are taking place throughout the month. But I will ask this, how many of you are already listening to Christmas music? Yeah, okay, yeah, me too. November 1st, Sirius XM, baby. I have like six new channels. Bam! Holly, all these, bam! I mean, me and Isabella going to school on uh, on November 1st, just singing Jingle Bells, singing everything we could in a festive ch- In fact, I think I even have, I do, I have a candy cane. Anybody have small candy canes yet? I love it. I love the season because it is certainly an open heaven, I believe, of a season because every mom, everybody's mind goes on Christmas. And you can't have Christmas without Christ. And so over the next several weeks, you're going to see several things that are going to be coming up for the end of November. We have a huge outreach and we have so many things in December. But whatever it is, all kinds of great things are coming our way. Can somebody say amen? Let's give God one more hand clap of praise. Let's grab your message notes. Grab your message notes. They're inside your little programs. Um, we're going to go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4, if you have your Bibles, run there with me real quick. Some of you came in, you look famished, so we're going to get out to eat in just a few minutes. In fact, we're starting a new series today called Overheard. And so I was coming in, and I could overhear some of your stomachs growling. And so we're going to get outside, but we're, we're, we, we always maximize our time together in worship. We believe that church is uh, another utmost uh, uh, priority thing that we should have in our life. Uh, the church, not only the coming together as the church body, but also just being the church as a movement of God um, out in the world. And so the Lord has been challenging us here, uh, here at Kingdom Life, telling us that we are to be the light of the world. Amen. And so today we're starting a new series called Overheard. And so today in the next few weeks, we're going to be looking to scripture um, about different conversations that the Lord had either with individuals and or with the disciples and or with groups or multitudes of people and just hearing what the Lord has to say. But I want to go back to uh, John chapter four. Uh, Pastor Isaac said yesterday, didn't you just preach on that like two weeks ago? And I'm racking my brain. I'm like, I don't think I preached on it two weeks ago. And so I'm going, I had to go back. I went back, went back all the way to August. He said, well, it seemed like it was just two weeks ago. So I laugh because uh, it's funny because I preached on this story of the woman at the well in August, but we, we talked about it from a perspective of worship. You guys remember the worship series? We talked about it from a perspective of worship. Today, I'm going to look at the same story, but from a totally different perspective. That's what the word will do for you. No, no matter when you pick it up, man, it's, it's, it's so amazing how powerful it is for, for the moment that you find you, the where you're living. The word will speak right where you are. And so we're going to look at this story in John chapter four, but I want to subtitle the message, and it's probably going to be a little bit challenging for you, for some of you to get through it, but it's called Let's Eat. Look at somebody tell them, Let's Eat. Let's see. Now, now, we're not talking about, we're not going to head out and say amen and head out real quick, but we will be there shortly. But I want to talk about uh, that subject matter today, and I'll talk to you a little bit more as we go through this story. But let's look at John chapter 4. Let's start in verse number 5. Uh, if you've been around church um, for a little while, this story is so familiar um, to most of us, but it's such a powerful story. So uh, let's look at verse 5 of chapter 4. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, what does it say? Jacob's well. Everybody say Jacob's well. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, set thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. That would have been about noon because their day starts at 6 a.m. So it's at the sixth hour around noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy what? to buy food. So I want you to I want you to look at that last verse right there. The disciples went into the city to buy food. Now we're going to we're going to go uh, we're going to step a little further ahead in, in chapter 4 to verse 31 in just a moment, but I want you to notice Jesus was tired, he was wearied. Um, he was uh, hungry. He was because they went to go buy food, he was thirsty because he asked for a drink. I, I'm reminded of Jesus's humanity in this moment because he was both okay, God and man, right? He was both divinity and flesh. So he was both human, but here the human side of him began to get hungry. The human side of him began to, to get thirsty and he was tired. Now, I don't know if you've ever been hungry and thirsty and tired at the same time, but anytime that I ever find myself in that place and somebody comes up and wants to have a conversation or interrupt my moment, I'll say, just give me a moment. Let me get something to eat. Let me, let me give me a moment. Let me get something to drink. I don't know how you react to that, but that's kind of how I react. Just give, just give me a second. Anybody ever react that way? Just give me a minute. Well, but Jesus, 
Jesus is taking time. He's tired. He's, he, he's weary. He's hungry. He's thirsty. And, and, and he asked this woman for a drink. Now let's jump forward in verse 31 and we'll come back to the conversation. In the meantime, his disciples urged him saying, Rabbi, eat. Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. Therefore, the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and what does it say? To finish his work. Powerful. So the confusion that sets in, you can imagine for the disciples here, the confusion that sets in is because Jesus is saying, I, I, I'm already full. Now, now here, here is the dilemma. They're, they're not looking at it from Jesus's viewpoint. They're looking at it from uh, their viewpoint, which their viewpoint to this matter is more natural and physical, and it certainly is not spiritual. And so what Jesus is talking about is he's talking about spiritual food. I want to remind you today concerning the Word of God. This is the Word of God. The Word of God is called bread from heaven. Come on. It's also called the water of life. And so God's word is bread. It is water. And it's not only that. When you begin to look at the spiritual food, it's not only in God's word that we get the spiritual food, but Jesus was full because he was doing God's will, because he was doing God's work. And so when I begin to look at this story new this week, I was reminded again of how I am, how I am fed when I am living out the will of God in my life, how I am fed and full when I am doing the work of God in my life and I am full and I am fed when I'm in God's word. So the reason why, and I begin to think about this, the reason why many of us are starving spiritually is the reason why we're so hungry spiritually and, and, and we, we, we don't, we're, we're living without is because we don't read the word, we don't do the will, and we don't finish the work. And so if we want to be full, if we want to be living abundantly in our lives, then we got to tap into God's word. we got to get in alignment with God's will, and we might, we got to begin to finish the work that he's called us to do. Come on, look at somebody say, it'll work if you work it. It'll work if you work it. And so I'm looking at this story, and I'm just amazed. And so when I begin to feel what Jesus is telling us today is, is he's telling us that we need to eat not just physical food. We need to eat spiritually. So I only have three points in this story that I want to share with you today. And the first one is this. Jesus shared his story. I love that new song that they sang today concerning your story and how it becomes a testimony. For about a year now, the Lord has really been ministering to my heart concerning many of you because I, I was sitting in that corner one Sunday and, and getting ready to come out on the platform and, and I just looked across the room and I could see stories that are being written and I, and I could see amazing testimonies all over the room. And even as I'm looking right now, I, I see the hand of God at work in your lives and in your homes and and with your families, I'm seeing God work. And, and so I'm reminded that you have a story and I have a story. But I want to tell you, Jesus also had a story. And so look at what it says in verse 9. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, okay, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you what? Living water, he says. And the woman said in response to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with. You don't have a cup. And the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? You are, are you greater than our father Jacob? Which, by the way, he is. Come on, somebody. Who gave us the well and drank from it? And drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered, watch this, and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. See, the point in that is that if all we're doing is drinking from the well of our flesh and the well of our humanity and the well of the world, we will continually get thirsty because it will never, uh, never achieve what, what it can be spiritually. He said, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give, he will never, come on, will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of living spring, living water springing up into everlasting life. It's incredible. Now, 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 has anybody, has anybody felt that from the Lord? 
Has, does anybody know what I'm talking about? When, 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 you, when you may see me and I may be in an altar, I may be leaping. That's me from, from since I got saved because it was almost like this, this, uh, this, this river just began to burst forth on the inside of me. And it was just this, I, all of a sudden, I don't know. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And it was just like living water, it said, just welling up into me. And so the moments of my low moments of my life and the moments where I wasn't living the right, the, the, living the right way or the God way are moments when I began to dam up the water, the spring, come on. But I would come to, I would come back to God and he would help. He would just remove those stones. He would remove those rocks so that the living water could flow in me. And so he says, you will thirst again if you drink that water, but you shall never thirst if you drink the water that I have. So what Jesus did is he simply shared his story. In this encounter, what we see is Jesus telling this woman just who he was. It's amazing to me. Your story, his story, but your story is the most powerful witnessing tool that you have. Oh, y'all not going to help me today. I said your story. I thought I said amen in that back corner. Didn't I say amen back there? His story, your story is the most powerful witnessing tool that you have. Now, I know what you're saying. Those of you that know me, they say, well, well, you, I, my story is not like your story. But can I tell you that the most important part of my story is not the sin of my life? The most important part of my story is Jesus. And if you have Jesus, then you have the most important part of the story. This woman, watch what happens. He begins to talk with her, but look what she does. She starts bringing up a lot of excuses. The first thing, she goes, you being a Jew, how, I mean, how are you talking to me, a Samaritan? She brings up race. Look what she brings up. She brought up reason. You don't have a cup. You don't have a bucket. She brings up religion. Come on now. She, but, but listen, what, what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't begin to argue race and religion and all this other kind of stuff. You know what he did? He stuck to his story. He stuck to his story. You and I don't need to be in arguments and debates with people. We need to stick to the most important story. And that is what Jesus has done in your life and in mine. We don't argue. You know what we say? You know the only thing we need to say is, hey, here's the way I was and here's the way I am. That's who I used to be, but I'm not that way anymore. All we need to do is share the story of what Jesus has done in our lives. I love when I read through my Bible and I see these different men and these women who have this encounter with Jesus and their life is changed forever. And all they do is share the story of the encounter they had with Jesus. They didn't go through and tell all the, the other things and the people that bypassed them, people that didn't give them money, people that, 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 that didn't throw their money their way you know, by the temple gate. No, no, no. They just talked about the encounter that they had with Jesus. They shared his story through their eyes. What the world needs is not another debate and argument from you and I. What the world needs to hear is your story of how you met a man. Come on. You met a man that changed your life, that changed your history, and will change your eternity. You have to, and here's the thing I'm going to have to tell somebody. In order to be able to share your story, you're going to have to talk to people. You're going to have, you're going to have to talk, you're going to have to talk to people. I can teach you how to do that. I can y'all y'all want me to teach you right now? I can tell you very easy how to talk to people. You know what everyone's favorite subject is? Themselves. Amen. I'll prove it to you. Whenever you see a group photo, who's the first one you're looking for? Yeah, and if and if and if you don't if you don't look good in that photo, guess what? It's a bad photo for everybody else. You begin to talk to a man, he'll talk about his truck, he'll talk about his motorcycle, he'll talk about his business, he'll talk, I'm looking at you right here. Listen, come on, you talk about things I'm interested in, you're going to start, you're going to get me perked up a little bit, right? That's the way it is. So when you begin to talk, just the other day, I was at a restaurant and simply, oh, I'm, I'm tell, I'll tell a fresh story of yesterday. We had somebody come to the uh, church, Isaac and I, Pastor Isaac and I were in the lobby and, and this lady had come up and she wanted to do early voting. Now we're a voting station, but we don't do early voting here. And so we opened up the door and Pastor Isaac she said, oh, okay, okay, it's fine, it's okay. And Pastor, I said, hey, by the way, we got a fall fest tomorrow. And she stopped turning around, she goes, well, I got a bunch of kids. Anyway, this whole conversation, I'm sitting there watching him, it's so great. But all he did was engage right where she was, and, and she responded in that moment. So all we got to do is share our story. All we got to do is extend an invitation. You said, well, again, my story's not, now, you know, your story's better than mine. No, everyone that has Jesus has the good part of the story. So he shared his story. Number two, very quickly, he moved in a miraculous Jesus moved in the miraculous. In verse 16 of John chapter 4, Jesus said to her, <laughs> now this is going to get fun. Go call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, 
I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you have said, well, I have no husband for you have had five husbands. And the one that you, the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you spoke truly. <laughs> oh, we're getting uneasy in here. Isn't it? And, the, and the woman said to him, sir, I perceive you are a prophet. It is a great story. I mean, it's, it is so humorous, but, but Jesus is meeting her right where she is. Now, what you may not know is there's a spiritual term called a word of knowledge. What you see in this moment is you see Jesus giving a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit gave him something in that moment about this person that he could not know, did not know, but the Lord gave it to him in that moment, right? Anybody ever gotten a word of knowledge before about someone or something that, yeah, and so, so he's operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. I need to tell somebody, listen, Jesus did the ministry that he did when he was on the earth as a human being through an intimate relationship with the Father, hello somebody, and a sensitive relationship with the Holy Spirit. How he did what he did was because of his intimate relationship. If you're taking notes, you got to write this down. With the Father and a sensitive relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, let me, let me, and, and by the way, that's the way you and I are going to make it in this life and through this life. It's by having an intimate relationship and a sensitive relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4, 14, then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went through all the surrounding religion, a region. So he came back in the power of the what? Come on, help me now. He came back in the power of the what? The Spirit. John chapter 5, then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Not only that, Philippians 2, 6 and 7. Though he was God, he did not think of equality, equally or equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, what does it say? He gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. He moved in the miraculous by the power of the Holy Spirit in his life. But number three, and this is the final point. Jesus said here's story. He moved in the miraculous and she shared her story. John chapter 4, verse 25. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who was called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said, look at this response. I who speak to you am he. And at that point, his disciples, they came and they marveled that he was talking with a woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek? Or why with a woman? Yet no one said, what, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water pot, went her way into the city, and said to the men, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? She left one encounter with Jesus. Jesus shared his story. He moved in a word of knowledge in her life in the miraculous. She was transformed in that moment. She laid her own water pot down. The thing that she was, the thing that was feeding her, the thing that was quenching her thirst, she left it at the place that she met Jesus. Now, she'd been to that place many times. She had been at that well many times. But this time was drastically different because of Jesus. She had one encounter, turned her life down. She left with one message, come see a man. If I would today to somebody in the room, I, 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 want, you to, I want you to meet him. <laughs> Our message to the world it should be come see a man. So you may say, well, how do we, how do people win people to Jesus? People who have met Jesus introduce people to him. Oh, come on, help me, church. I'm trying not to get going too much because y'all hungry, I know. But we're eating. We're eating right now. How do people win people to Jesus? There's so many people in the room today that you minister to, that you invited, and I commend you for it. Keep doing that. But what you did is you, you had met Jesus, 
And then you are here today to help introduce other people to Jesus. That's our role. That's our mission. Our mission as a church is to connect all people to the presence of God, that they may have hope, joy, and they may have freedom in their life. And that's what we do in this room. That's what we do every Sunday. That is our mission. But along with our mission, we have our core values. And if you want to know who we are, this is what we're about. We're about connecting. We, we're about grow. We're about serve. And we're about worship. Now, we want to do those things. We want to help connect others to Christ. We want to connect with one another. We want to commit ourselves to growth as a disciple. We want to grow with his word. We want to grow. We also want to help connect you into, into a, a stream of growth for your life. But not only that, we want to serve. You, before you pulled up today, many of you were out there. You were out there. You were serving all morning long. You were setting up fences. You were, you, were, you were picking up pumpkins. You were doing all these things, making games, all these things, wonderful things. You were serving. And it's a privilege, church, to be able to serve. But not only that, worship. We believe that worship is the most important tool that we have outside of our witness in the world is our worship because your worship changes every environment you find yourself in. If you would bring worship to the place, of, uh, to the front, what you will be, begin to see is the Holy Spirit invading that place. It could be a home. I don't know where it is, but the Lord will invade that place because the Bible says that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And so we want to release his worship. So we want you to meet him. If you don't, if you don't know him, I want to invite you today as we pray in a moment to open up your heart to him. And he will share his story with you. But I want to share this memory verse. Because the Lord in kingdom life, this is us. When you look around the room, this is a part of this today. But John chapter 4, verse 35. Do not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look to the fields, for they are already white as harvest. Come on. Already. They're already white. And so all over this room, you and I are part of the harvest. Amen. But as we are harvested, our role then is to sow, sit, sow seed and to go out into the world <coughs> and harvest because it's already white. Amen? I'm talking about your family that's lost. I'm talking about your friends that are lost. You be the light. You share your story and you share his story through you. And I promise you, his story will change anyone. Amen, somebody? The last scripture I want to share, and we're going to pray. I'm going to pray, Steve, guys, can go ahead and come. Luke chapter 14, then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be what? Filled. That's a pretty filled house today. Amen. Look around. It's a pretty filled house. But we know the Lord's just getting started with us here. It's amazing how the Lord is growing this ministry and growing. And we're thankful for everyone. But we want to just embrace the calling on us, the mission for all of us. No matter who you are, you have the same mission. Because it was Jesus' mission. He gave us the mission to go into all the world. And so let's go out today full spiritually. Let's go out and share the light of Jesus in the world in which we live. Because your world is not my world. My world is not your world. Your world is your world. Now, my name is Wayne, so I have Wayne's world. Oh, come on. Y'all ain't going to If you're new today, I do a lot of those type of moments right there. Um, but you do. Oliver's got his world. Tammy definitely has her world. Her world has a little, uh, what do they call them, huffle lumps and things popping around. I'm just kidding. I'm messing. But let's go into our world that God has called us in. And let's bring the compassion of God, the mercy of God, the love of God. And let's bring our story and let's bring his story. And let's share it with those. Because church, they need it. You know, the Lord has given me a new term for, we, we always say unchurched. I've shared this with Pastor Isaac the other day. But I want to start, you're going to hear me say this quite often going into the new year. Is, and that is, uh, we should have a goal to reach the unreached. Okay? They're just unreached. But we're going to reach for them. Amen? Paul said, forget those things which are behind. I'm reaching and I'm pressing forward to those things which are ahead. Let go of yesterday. Let's press and let's reach right now. Would you stand to your feet all over this building?
Again, we invite you um, to visit our connection table. If you would like to uh, stop by, if you're new, thank you for coming and being here. Anything we can do for you, for your family, please let us know. But you can head on out in just a moment. We're going to pray, and they'll give you some instruction outdoors, but it's going to be a wonderful time. we got a beautiful day. But this is a, such an important moment right here. If you came today and you don't know Jesus, you don't have a relationship with him, but you would like to, I want to tell you, all it takes is belief. If you confess, okay, you confess your belief, you confess the sin in your life, the Bible says that when we do, that he will forgive the sin, okay, immediately. You don't need to go through any kind of uh, growth track. You don't need to go through any kind of steps. You don't need to memorize any kind of scripture. All it takes is belief in him. He's standing at the door of your heart, and he's knocking. He's standing. He stood at the door of my heart, and he was knocking. And I'm so glad that I opened that door. But would you bow your heads and close your eyes for just a moment? Lord, we thank you for each and every person here today and those who are with us right now online on YouTube or Facebook. God, we, we pray that they've been ministered to as much as we have in this room. But Lord, this is such an important moment because I believe what we saw in you, Jesus, sharing your story with this woman at the well, you've also in turn shared your story with us. And so, Father, I pray all over this room, if there be anyone that the Holy Spirit is drawing in this moment, that, that doesn't know you. They, they, they haven't been reached yet. They, they haven't called on you to be the Lord of their life and the Savior of your life. I, I, I'm going to invite them in this moment to pray a prayer with me. All over this room, if you just want to make sure, you want to, you want to open up your heart to Jesus today, or maybe you want to rededicate your life to the Lord right now, I can't think of a better moment than right now. So you can just pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. And I ask you to wash away those sins in my life that I can be whole and that I can live in you. I ask you to be the Lord of my life as well as the Savior of my life. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you came to this earth. I believe that you were hung on a cross as you sacrificed your life. You died on that cross. They put you in a tomb. But three days later, you rose out of that tomb. And because you rose, you have victory over death, hell, and the grave. I can have victory over death, hell, and the grave. And so I believe right now, Jesus, you are sitting to the right hand of God the Father. And you're making intercession. You're praying for me. And so when I answer, I pray today that that prayer would come true. So Lord, today, be the Lord of my life. Jesus, be my Savior. And it's in your name I pray. And everybody said, amen. Would you give him some praise today in this place? Hallelujah. Come on. Let God bless you. Have a beautiful week. We look forward to seeing you outside today. Have a great week.